Hey there everyone, Trucker John here, and good morning from Denver, Colorado. So I delivered here, left Milwaukee, Wisconsin, got here to Denver, Colorado, and uh, this receiver, uh, I guess they had some issues with their dock personnel. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the story, but uh, they were 24 hours behind in appointments. Uh, so I was, well, let's put it this way. I got my 34 hour reset by the time I got here, went off duty and uh, by the time they called me. Uh, so it took a long time. Uh, so there's definitely going to be some detention and layover pay that's going to pay handsomely. This uh, particular receiver pays very well. They pay uh, $15 for every quarter hour um, as a lease uh, truck. I get all of that. Uh, Theo will get all the layover pay and I'll get all the detention pay. That's, that's how we worked it out. So I made about $600 just sitting here basically. Uh, they cap out at 600 bucks. So not a bad day's work, just sitting here doing nothing, <laughs> waiting for them to call me in. Uh, although I would rather be driving. I'd rather be moving. I don't like just sitting here. Uh, it makes it difficult. So anyways, got a fresh reset, 70 hours on the clock. So I got a lot of time to do whatever. But then again, I don't. I have uh, just received orders. I'm going to Deadhead from Denver, Colorado to Dodge City, Kansas. And I will be picking up a preloaded trailer there. It's already waiting for me right now. I just have to get there. It's about a six hour drive from here. Uh, a little over six hours. And then I have to take that trailer to um, Mason, Ohio. So we've got about 1,300 miles ahead of us. And I've got about two days to do it in. So not a lot of times a tight load. So I also need to get a shower in at some point. And uh, I think I'm good on laundry, but the only guy I get a shower, my, my beard has turned into a mountain man beard. So I need to trim it back down to a, uh, a, a truck driver beard <laughs> because uh, it's still summertime. It's, this is August as the recording of this video. So it's still hot, still warm, too much of this face jacket. <clears throat> so I just need to trim it down a little. Also, cut my hair on top. I never let it get that long. Usually, I keep it nice and clean and close. So um, there's definitely need a shower where I can shave at some point. But I might just do a regular shower today because this is a tight load. Like I said, I got, I'm probably gonna have to do about 600 miles today and 600 miles tomorrow um, to get you know at least close to my delivery location in Ohio so that's the plan that's what we got so yeah uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna title this video yet uh, but it's gonna be along the sign uh, along the lines of uh, uh, I'm gonna hire some help for the truck uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get a skipper I'm gonna hire a skipper for the truck so as you all know if you've been following me um, my truck's name is clip so well if you haven't been following me my truck's name is Calypso. I'm the captain of this ship. Uh, my whole YouTube theme here has basically been um, pirate themed. So Calypso, who is a sea goddess, that's the name of my ship. I'm the captain uh, of Calypso. But I want, I'm gonna go ahead and get a skipper. So stay tuned at some point in this video. Um, we're gonna grab our skipper and I'm going to introduce him to you guys. All right, see you down the road.
All right. So we made it here to uh, Limon, Colorado. And I stopped here at this Flying J because I have to, to put fuel in the reefer before we drop it off in Dodge City, Kansas. So I also took advantage and got a shower in real quick. Just had to do a quick shower because I don't really have a lot of time today, so I didn't have time to groom myself, you know, get my beard cut down how I like and all that. Just a quick shower and uh, back on the road now. So yeah, we, we have to have the reefer at least at three quarters of a tank when we drop it off. Anything less than that and we get charged for it. So we wanna make sure we uh, get it filled up. When I say get charged for it, I mean, yeah, we're still paying for it, but we won't get we won't get the the prime discounts if we if we don't drop it off at least three quarters i always drop them off full and i always drop them off clean for the most part you know if it's just, if it's just a little dusty sometimes i just say yeah it's clean <laughs> but if there's you know if it's definitely dirty where a shipper uh, is not going to accept your empty trailer then of course i might get it cleaned out uh thankfully with where i'm going where i'm picking up it's a meat load and this particular facility in dodge city they have a a washout on site so i don't have to worry about stopping to get the trailer wash no, and i don't we don't have to pay for it either <clears throat> so uh just feel just got it filled up took a quick shower hitting the road so i did i forgot to mention when i was in denver at that receiver uh i ran into my old orientation buddy, Joseph. Uh, this is the, he's the first person I went through training with the orientation that I've actually met out here in the wild since then. I haven't seen any of my classmates, but we talk all the time. If you guys watch my videos, you know, we, we have a group text where, you know, there's seven of us out of the 14 that we had in the class that we still talk today in a big group text or sometimes separately. And, uh, I got to see Joseph for the first time since orientation. That was pretty cool. It was nice to meet, see you, Joseph. Uh, I've seen Kelvin a few times at terminals, uh, but I haven't seen nobody else. I've seen none of my classmates since we've graduated. So, uh, but I know they all watch my channel. They, you know, they support me, and it's amazing. Love you guys. So, anyways, helping back on the uh, 70 East here in Colorado. Like I said, we're in Lemon. L-I-M-O-N, is that lemon or limon? Anyways, uh, heading to Dodge City. It is a Tuesday morning and it's quite a bit of traffic. I passed a, a K-Way campground not too long ago and it was packed. I'm surprised for a Tuesday how busy it was. Maybe because it's still summer. I don't know if schools are back in session here in this area. I know my kids are back in school already being august what is august 17th i would assume everyone's back to school so i don't know what was up with that koa why it was so packed full of people maybe uh i don't know maybe people without kids camp during the weekdays i don't know anyways here we go one of the uh, benefits of deadheading empty obviously is fuel economy right now in my gas guzzler of a peterbilt all right just got my uh just, just told i can bypass this scale it's closed anyway that's probably why uh so anyways yeah i'm getting about 10 miles per gallon right now and actually for the last few weeks since my ace 2 class i've been getting pretty good gas mileage because i've been very mindful on my RPMs and my speed and the way I put fuel throughout the week. So um, yeah, definitely check out the ACE2 class if you're on the lease side, or even if you're a, a company driver like me driving a lease vehicle, try and ask the owner of the truck, you know, cause it's kind of up to them. You know, Theo, Theo invited me to the class, not prime. So ask, ask the owner, if you guys are in my same type of situation, ask if you can do that ACE2 class. It's, it's really a benefit for you to learn a lot about the finances of driving a truck if, if you don't know already, or even if you do know, it's a great refresher. And plus it's great for the owner of the truck because you're being conscious on how you 
burn fuel, which is our number one expense out here. So anyways, before I ramble too much, I will see you guys down the road. Welcome to Kansas. So as you saw, I made it to Dodge City. I didn't record at the uh, the facility where I picked up. Uh, those types of facilities usually do not like photography or video of any kind uh, on their property. Usually, most meat plants don't like that kind of stuff. Uh, so anyways, uh, I had a kind of an issue with my trailer. I dropped off my empty trailer, no problem. And when I hooked up to the loaded trailer, and this thing was really heavy it's about as heavy as it can be it's 40 uh, 44,110 pounds of uh, <clears throat> meat and uh, I'm not sure what my overall weight is but I, I'm pushing pretty close to 80,000 pounds 
Uh, so anyways, the, the problem is when you load the trailer that heavy and the trailer sits for such a long time, all the air and the air brakes, they, they, uh, they let out. So there's no air in the brakes. So when the, all the air leaves the brake chambers, the, the pins pop out to apply the brakes and that's what locks the wheels. So you have to hook up your airlines to the trailer to get air in there before you can adjust your tandems or, or even drive uh, because the, the air will push those pins back down so that way you can drive. That's how the brakes work, the air brakes. So anyways, um, got the air in there, everything was fine. I pulled the pin to re release the tandem so I can slide them. And man, I just could not get the trailer to slide. I couldn't get the tandems to slide. I would, uh, I would, the, the tandems were all the way back, so I needed them to, to come forward a little to balance the weight. And every time I would uh, reverse the truck and the trailer the, with the brakes applied, so that so that, that means the tires shouldn't move. Well, the tires would move. So it's probably because there wasn't enough air. Uh, but anyways, I had a hard time. Basically what I had to do is I had to drive forward quite a, quite a ways, probably the length of my entire vehicle. And then uh, I had to put it in reverse, gain a little bit of speed, and pull the red trailer air supply brake. Uh, kind of like slamming on the brakes, but just for the trailer, not the tractor. I don't want, I want the tractor to keep pushing the trailer. So that, that's why I had to do that a few times to get the tandems to move because they were just frozen. They would not move because, because of all the weight. And I mean, I'm like really heavy too. I'm like 33 and five and 33 and five. I'm pretty, pretty much as heavy as I can be. <laughs> so that's definitely gonna kill my fuel mileage. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing 10 miles per gallon right now, but that's not gonna last, obviously. So anyways, we are on our way. Uh, once I get stopped tonight, I will introduce you to my my new skipper. Uh, he is here on the truck now. He's in the bunk right now, resting. Uh, so once I get stopped and everything, we get situated, we'll, we'll have a little conversation on camera here. All right, guys, let's see you on the road. So I hope I'm gonna get lucky here. I usually never stop this late at night. It's, what is it, nine o'clock at night. So I'm hoping there's at least one spot for me. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, I think we're good. Let's see, is that guy leaving? I'll get right behind him if he's leaving. He's not open. Okay, I'm gonna get behind this guy. I just turned it. I, I saw his lights turn on, so I thought maybe he was gonna be leaving. But that's okay. I'll, at least I got a spot. That's all I care about. There's actually a few spots left, so that's good. My window is dirty. You can definitely tell it's bug season. All right, so let's take a look at this, see what we did today. All right, so I still have 715 miles left to I get, until I get to my final destination. I've got, I think you see that. I'm not sure you can see that. I got 34 minutes left on my clock. So let's go ahead and go off duty. You have zero hours and 33 minutes of remaining sure. drive time. Let's go off duty, and I'm going to select. We're going to do a walk around. So basically, we're going to make sure we're parked right. Make sure no tires are flat. We're just going to do a quick walk around. All right, so I am off duty. So let's see. I drove 613 miles today, and. Let's see here. Let's do a summary. 
So I have 41 minutes left on my drive time out of my 11 hours. My 14 hour clock is actually less, so that's why I only have 33 minutes left. So the 14 hour clock is actually lower, so that supersedes everything else. And I just got my reset, as I said earlier, so there's my uh, 70 hour, I'm down to 58, 48. And let's take a look at my eight day logs. So that's what we did today. We did, I don't know if you can see that. I can't see it on my screen, so maybe when I produce the video, it'll be nice and clear, but right now it's blurry on my end. So I hope you guys can see this. Anyway, so today is the 17th, that's what we did. 613 miles, uh, it was 10 hours and 18 minutes of drive time, 11 hours and 11 minutes of on-duty time. All right, uh, so yesterday, nothing, because I got my 34-hour reset in. So basically from the 15th at night, all the way until 17th this morning, so a day and a half. Uh, sitting at that ship, uh, that receiver, I uh, got my 34 hour reset in, that's why I now have 70 hours on my clock. But before that, I had awesome recaps. Look at this, I had, uh, the day before that, I did 672 miles, 380, 458, 481. The, the 672 is kind of much, but all these other ones, that's what I generally like to do. I like to do around 500 miles a day. And that gives me, you know, eight hours, nine hours, 11 hours um, to recap. So that way I'm not always trying to get a 34 hour reset in, I can just recap my time. All right, so before we, let's see, before we go to, to do our walk around, go to sleepy birth, what I wanna show you guys the fuel. So I talked about this in, in the other video when, when I'm talking about fueling. So this is a prime exclusive thing. I'm not sure what other, um, companies out there do that but for for you prime guys uh it's the macro 27 which is this one right here best fuel stops so i generally do this in the morning i, I don't do it at night when i stop like this i do it in the morning before i leave so right before i start my pre-trip inspection this is the first thing i do so that way i get an updated fuel pricing along my route so i i, I, I talked about it in my in my last video when i did my ace2 class so I won't go into detail, but this is what it looks like. I didn't show it in that video. So this is what it's gonna ask me. It's gonna ask me how much fuel do I have? So let's take a look. I have somewhere between half and a quarter a tank of fuel. So this is what we're gonna put. I have between half and a quarter right there. Come on. All right. Put an X in there. Now it's gonna ask me, what's my miles per gallon? All right, so let's go take a look at that. My miles per gallon currently is 8.9. Man, I was up to like 10 something with that uh, empty trailer, but now that I have this almost 80,000 pound vehicle going over some hills here in uh, the eastern part of Kansas, yeah, it hurt me a little. 8.9, that's still not bad. 8.9 is not bad. Um, that's, uh, Prime likes you to be at seven. Seven and higher, so 8.9. I think I'm okay. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna say I'm only getting 8.5. I like to go down a little, so I'm getting 8.5. Actually, you know, let's just do eight. I'm doing eight miles per gallon routing through city. So if you wanted a route somewhere specific, you can put the city code in there, all that information. I never do that because I never had a need to send routing. Yes, so that's gonna update my navigation to, sh to route me to that specific place. DEF required. I usually never say yes because DEF usually lasts a while. Uh, at least at least one and a half Phillips for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm good on DEF. So I'm just gonna leave it blank. And that's it. I'm gonna send it. So when I send it, the computer is gonna calculate. Let's see when it goes out. So the computer is gonna calculate exactly where along my route would be the best fuel stops. So I'll do this again in the morning, but I won't show it. Uh, but that's how you do it. So when it gets the response, I will show you guys. And uh, I'm gonna do my quick walk around, real, uh, make sure I'm parked properly. Turn off the truck. So I don't like to idle because that wastes fuel. My APU should kick on if I didn't turn it off. Anyways, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, you guys can't see me, oh well. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, I'm gonna do my quick walk around. I'm gonna come back. We're gonna take a look at that um, best fuel stop message. 
And then I'm gonna introduce you, I think he's ready. I'm gonna, he's starting to wake up back there. So I'm gonna introduce you. Uh, I, like I said, I hired a skipper. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be a good team here on the truck. So I'm gonna give him a formal introduction. Uh, once I get All right, so everything was okay on my walk around. So as you can see here, my dispatch navigation has been updated. So that means that they found a better recommended fuel stop than the original one that was given to me. So let's go ahead and say okay. Go look at the dispatch. So now it's sending me to Petra. So it wanted me to go to a uh, Flying J. So now it wants me to go to a Petro. And it wants me to go to Kingdom City, Missouri. Uh, before I wanted me to go somewhere here in Kansas, right before I left Kansas. So it's telling me that I can actually go a little further. Get the route, see how far it is. Can actually, I, I can actually go a little further than what originally was computed. And by doing that, it's saving me some fuel. It's saving me some money on fuel. So we'll see how far this actually goes. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. So... <clears throat> Recommended fuel stop using 71 gallons, so it automatically knows how many gallons I have in the truck. I'm telling it I only have eight miles per gallon. So I want to go to the pet. Saying go to the Petro in Kingdom City, Missouri. Gosh, what is that? This thing is the. In 48 miles, continue straight on I-70. 260 miles. All right, so I got about a four-hour drive. A little over four hours to get there. Uh, so it's <clears throat> going to be cutting into our shift a little tomorrow. Where'd that go? So that's how finicky this machine is. I, I really don't like this. I wish we had like tablets, Android or, or even iPads. Something just a little bit easier to use than this. This is just really old technology and I hate it. You can only do so much with it or it'll just crash. You can't do more than one thing at a time on it. Like I was trying to read my messages. But then I asked it to find me a route somewhere. So while I'm reading the messages, it kicks me out of my messages to go back to the map. It's just, the design is just terrible. It's, just, it's old technology. Anyways, Kingdom City, Missouri, that's where I'm gonna stop tomorrow. Uh, wants me to buy 60 gallons at 232 a gallon as of today's date. So again, I'm gonna do this again tomorrow uh, to see if it find me a, a different fuel station with because fuel ch uh, fuel prices change at midnight every day. So at midnight tonight, they'll change. So when I wake up in the morning, I will redo this to see if it's changed and giving me a better fuel price somewhere else. So that's pretty much it. That's the, uh, oh. so one more thing. So I got 260 miles there, but I still have like seven, what was it, 740 something miles to get to my 90, my uh, final destination. So I want to look at my hours. So I already know that I have plenty of time. I mean, I got 58 hours on my clock and I have 700 and just say 700, 750 miles to drive tomorrow. Um, obvious to get to my destination. So I, I'll knock out a chunk of that tomorrow for sure. And I'm going to show that in the next video here. Uh, but my appointment's not until the next morning at six in the morning. So whatever, whatever I can't finish tomorrow, I can make it for in the next the next morning before I get to my uh, receiver. So stay tuned for that video. All right, I think I dragged this out enough. Uh, you guys ready to meet this guy? You ready to meet my, my the skipper that I hired for the truck? You ready to get on camera? All right, here we go. All right, so uh, without dragging this on any longer, uh, I want to, I'm going to tell you the, the whole story behind this. Uh, but let me just go ahead and introduce you to this guy. Um, his name is Loki. Say hello, Loki. <laughs> he is a seven-year-old uh, Boston Terrier Jack Russell Terrier mix. Right? Did I say that right? Yeah. We're still getting used to each other. Uh, like I said, he's seven years old. He's not a puppy. So, but he likes me. I think he likes me. You like me, right? I think he does. I've been feeding him, so I know he likes me. <laughs> uh, so how did I get Loki? Uh, well, uh, as you guys know, I went to the, the ACE 2 class uh, there in um, Salt Lake City, and I met this guy named uh, Andrew. Uh, he was also taking the class, and Andrew and I got to talking, and uh, he had 
uh, he said he had a dog and a cat on the truck. And um, I had mentioned that I was planning to either become a trainer here pretty soon, or I was gonna get a dog. I was gonna actively start looking for a dog now that I don't have uh, you know, any family on the truck. I'm not doing any more tours for the rest of this year. So I was like, yeah, let me start looking for a dog. So we had this conversation. It's like, you know what? I, I, I need to get rid of my dog and my cat and uh, because he's becoming a trainer and you can't have a, a dog or any animals on the truck if you're going to be a trainer with Prime. So um, it was just kind of like being in the right place at the right time for both Andrew and myself and Loki. Right, Loki? Right? He's a good boy. Um, so I was like, yeah, well, let's just try it out. You know, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in Salt Lake City for the night. Let's put him on my truck, see how he does. And yeah, he got, we got along right away, you know. Um, so a little, a little bit about Loki. Um, obviously, I didn't give him that name. He's seven years old. He's had that name since birth. So uh, I can't call him Skipper. Well, I could call him Skipper, but he won't come. <laughs> He'll only come by call him Loki. Uh, but he's fully trained, you know, and he's been on a truck for the last four years or so. So he's accustomed to truck life. So it's just kind of perfect for me because um, that's one thing I really didn't want to deal with on the truck was teaching a dog how to be in the truck, teaching that truck life, um, more so just the potty training. That, that's probably what I mean. Not, not teaching him the truck life, but teaching the potty training. That's kind of hard to do in the truck, especially with our schedules. Uh, so Andrew, however you, however you taught Loki, you did a great job, did really good. He's very accustomed to the truck. I've had him, uh, gosh, for about a week now. And uh, yeah, he, he knows when the truck's stopping, it's time to go for a walk. And he knows how to get back into the truck and everything. I mean, I carry him obviously, but uh, he, he just knows. He knows the routine, he knows what to do. So uh, it was just a blessing for me to find Loki. My family has already fallen in love with him. We've talked over FaceTime, uh, Messenger with Loki to the family. So the kids and uh, Mrs. Trucker John, they're all in love already and can't wait to meet him in person. So yeah, that's the new skipper. He's gonna be in charge of the truck whenever I'm out of it. That's what the skipper is, right? Skipper, Loki. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we've been having a lot of fun getting used to each other and uh, yeah, he already knows what cookie means when he comes back from his walks and all that good stuff. So anyways, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, share this journey with Loki and share Loki's journey with you guys as an addition to the uh, to the crew here on the Calypso. So, all right guys, I've drugged out this video long enough, I think. So um, I'm going to make a separate video for the rest of this trip starting tomorrow morning. So we'll see you guys on the road.